Heavenly Father, we have come today to see the beauty and the glory of Jesus. We come with expecting hearts, knowing that you're going to show up in a powerful way. So do that as you work through your word, as you work through imperfect people and imperfect means to show your power and your glory and, yes, your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start out with a news item this morning. I want to know if you heard this past week a news item about a Karen Wessel. I will draw her picture up here today. Anyone hear this story? Well, I'm going to fill in the details if you have or haven't. Karen Wessel was out on a lake this past week. And a great time to be out on a lake uh, up by Wisconsin. It was Star Lake on the border of Wisconsin and Michigan. And while she was there, she was with friends and with one of her children and three other little ones, and they saw the little ones swimming by the sandbar. Well, her friends notice that the little ones are struggling coming back from the sandbar, and so they go out to swim and help the kids who are struggling. She helps not even her own child, but a grandson of a friend, and in the process of helping that grandson swim, she loses her life. Her body is found on the lake. She's flown to a hospital and confirmed dead. The son that she was helping, the grandson of the friend, however, had a different story. He is living. He has no long-term damage. He is safe and sound because of the help that was given by a Karen Wessel from Arlington Heights. Now, we look at that story, and this is a modern-day hero, isn't it? Karen is someone who saw what was needed to be done and jumped in, didn't consider the cost, and did what was required. Well, that's what we're talking about today. And welcome again to Amazing Love. I'm so glad that you're here. And I hope God moves powerfully through this word. We're focusing on the fruit of the Spirit. And, and, and the goal for this series is that we do produce this fruit, this goodness, as we pursue our Savior. But goodness can be vague. We can call baseball teams good and burgers good and experiences good. And so let's get a new definition of good. And that's why I brought up Karen Wessel. How's this for a definition of goodness? Goodness is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Not just seeing it, anyone can see it, but actually doing it. Jumping in, doing what it takes, not excusing it, but doing it. And that's what we want to talk about today. In fact, today as we turn to God's Word, we're going to learn of a Samaritan who is also called good. In fact, if you haven't been to church in a while, if this is your first time, welcome, by the way. Um, you might have heard this story before, uh, the, the story of the Good Samaritan. And we're going to pick it apart and see why he's referred to as good. So I invite you now to turn to our scriptures. Um, recorded to you, uh, middle of page 7, uh, there we read together. It says, In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Well, a priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Well, so too a Levite who is like a priest in that culture, a Levite would work in the temple. This is a religious person, a church person. When he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Now which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Dear friends, what is goodness? It's not found in a priest today. I don't know what that means for me. Not found in a Levite either. It's found in a Samaritan. And we're going to pick apart a little bit what the Samaritan does and ask God would bless us with that same type of goodness. So we consider. I want to know if you're gearing up for school, how many of you are doing doctor's appointments for kids? Anyone else in that same boat? And so you got the vision, you got the dental, you got the medical exams. And uh, well, Nadia, our, our five year old's approaching kindergarten, and unfortunately, she has an exam that needs shots. Does anyone in the building like shots? Anyone, anyone, like needles, like I love needles and, and blood and all that? <laughs> Some people are going to pass out if I go too far. Well, Nadia definitely fits in the category of not liking shots, um, and, and there can be degrees of how much you do not like this, right? Uh, for Bella, we remember, at least my wife told me, that she put on the brave face. When Bella went to the doctor, she's like, I'm going to try to get through it, and you're going to clench your teeth and go from there, and, and, and there we go, right? Nadia, however, just gave in. 
And I was hearing from my wife, I mean, she was screaming bloody murder. It was the worst type of screaming. Uh, the only thing that was good about it is she wanted daddy afterwards, so <laughs> felt good. And so you can have different sensitivities. In fact, your body can have different sensitivities. I looked at one of the shots, and she's got a lump on her leg from one of the shots. I don't know what that means. I hope it goes down. But anyway, she's very sensitive to the shots. Well, for medical things, we can have different degrees of sensitivity. And I'm not sure if you have a brave face or if you give in to fear. I'm not sure what it is. But today, part of being good is being sensitive. That's what God is calling us today through the words that we're considering. He says, I want you to have a sensitivity. Not to medical things, but to people. In fact, that's what we see the Good Samaritan. Look again at verse 33. A Samaritan, as he traveled, he came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. Now that word, pity, is, is one of my favorite Greek words. It's the word splanknizomai. You guys want to say that with me? Here we go. Splanknizomai. It's just, just an awesome, just spit while you're doing it, right? It's just great. Splanknizomai. And what splanknizomai means is that you feel it in your innards. That's the definition. And so I'm not sure where you're supposed to feel like your intestines is what it said in Greek, my dictionary. Well, I think I feel stuff more in my heart. So I'm going to say he felt it in his heart. His heart went out. He had compassion. When he saw what was happening, his heart hurt and he had compassion. And that's, that's what it is. Well, God is telling us, you want to be good. True goodness cannot just be about serving ourselves. It cannot just be looking to ourselves and and, and spending time and making decisions and spending money and using our talents only on ourselves. That isn't true goodness. Goodness, my friends, the first component is being sensitive to the needs of others. we got to look outside. In fact, through the words of Paul, we, we hear in Philippians this, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition, nothing, or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others even above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. That's what the Samaritan is doing. But what makes this even more extreme, and everyone in this culture would get this, is that Samaritans and Jews were born enemies. They're enemies to the degree that in World War II, the Nazis hated the Jews. Same thing, although Jews were not putting Samaritans in concentration camps, but they hated them. These were born enemies. The, the Jews looked at Samaritans as half-breeds, as less than. See, see, they had some Jewish blood, but it was mixed with others, and so they, they weren't as good. They weren't as noble. In fact, uh, interesting note, whenever Jews would travel, um, they would avoid the land of Samaria. It, it's kind of like if you hated Wisconsin so much and Wisconsinites so much and you're trying to get to Minnesota, you just go through Iowa every time, right? Um, that was the Jews and Samaritans. Just hated them. And so what this guy is doing, by being sensitive to a Jew who has been mean, and their race has been mean, he's looking beyond any border. He has a heart of forgiveness. He's loving even enemies. Goodness is doing the same. God says, in your sensitivity to others, it's not just about those in your family. It's not just about your friends. Goodness should extend even to those who have hurt you, to those you have every right to hate. That's true goodness. But it goes on. It goes on. And to talk about this, I want to talk about a volunteer we had at Amazing Love this past week. Uh, I love teen help. In fact, if we have any teens who need service hours, please feel free to contact Pastor. We'll put you to work. And in fact, this past Tuesday, we had some landscaping that we needed to be done. And, uh, and so we had a wheelbarrow. We had some dirt that we were going to remove. We were shoveling. We were raking. And this is hard clay. So this is kind of heavy-duty work. And does anyone remember what the, the weather was like on Tuesday? Hottest day of the year. At least it was in my mind. And so here this teen comes, and it's the hottest day of the year, in the hottest part of the day from 2 to 4. And, and, and at this point, he could be like, oh my goodness, Mom, can I go home now? I mean, this is not the service hours I was looking for. Uh, but that, that isn't what happened. He got to work. He was down and dirty in the dirt and mud. He was getting the dirt soil clumps off of the rakes. He was, he was a great worker. And, and yes, we had to drink a lot of water. And yes, it was good. But, but he wasn't afraid to get dirty. That's the second point of what it is to be good. What, what, what we need to be good is this. A willingness to draw near and then get dirty. We look at the Samaritan. It's very short and it's very sweet. But look at verse 34. Don't miss this. Goodness can start not only through the sensitivity, but it says he went to him. 
He went to him, and it wasn't a pretty case. This man who was probably bloodied, who was probably naked, he didn't have clothes, he was stripped from everything he had. He, He goes into the mess. God says also, you want to be truly good. It's not just about caring people. It's about finding out and being okay with a mess. I remember one time where I was pretty messy. I was in college. And one weekend I had, I I kid you not, it was like a baseball tournament. I had a book to read, a a paper to write, an exam that was coming. And three days to do it. And and I remember being so overwhelmed, I just broke down. And, And do you guys ever do a sloppy cry? Do you know what I'm talking about, like a sloppy, uncontrolled cry? I mean, that's where I was. And for a guy, that's like, man card, here you go, right? But, but I didn't care. I was in the midst of sloppy cry. I mean, the nose was running. Everything was out of whack. I mean, it just looked ridiculous. Well, right at that time, I had a baseball buddy come by and knock on my door. And, and so here again, the man thing, and I'm like, you know, I couldn't even try to fake what was going on. And, and he could have said, whoa, um, sorry, Dustin, looks like you need some time, right? Cool, I'll come back later. He didn't do that, though. The dude was okay with my runny nose, gave me a Kleenex, gave me a hug, and listened to me. You want to be good. It means being okay with a mess. It means looking at people who may be messier than we are, or maybe situations that aren't so clean, and entering in and saying, what can I do to help? This was the life of Jesus. In fact, people looked down on Jesus for getting involved in the mess. Some people said, Jesus, what are you doing hanging around with those messy people, hanging around with those tax collectors, hanging around with those prostitutes and sinners? And yet Jesus was comfortable in any mess. The holy God would enter any situation with his power. That's because he was good. But it goes on. It goes on. Talk about another aspect of goodness. I want to talk about restaurants. Have you ever had the experience at a restaurant where you go in and you open the menu and it's an uh uh-oh? And it's an uh uh-oh because this is what I wasn't planning to pay. (laughs) Now at that point where you experience that it's more expensive than you thought, you have a few options, an uh uh-oh. I can either charge it and face the music later, it's common. I can uh, order an appetizer or if I'm bold enough, I can leave. Um, I won't tell you the different ones that I've done, but, but those are your options, right? I can either, uh, you know, be willing to charge it, order appetizer, or leave because I figured out it's too much. Do you know as you seek to be good to others, there might come a point in, in, in this good activity where you say, oh, I wasn't expecting to give this much of myself. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to give this much of my time or of my money, and and maybe I should just back out here. But goodness, the final point, it's a willingness to pay the cost. In fact, look at the Samaritan. What does he do? Verse 34, it says, So first he's going to bandage the wounds, and he pours out his own oil and wine. Then he's going to leverage his donkey, which was his, and he's going to put his, the man on it. Uh, then it's even more incredible. When he goes to the inn, he, he's not looking for an insurance card or any extra money. He's going to pay the denarii, which is two days' wages, um, which today's equivalent, that'd be quite a bit. We can earn a lot in two days. And, and he gives it to the innkeeper. More remarkable, he doesn't tell the innkeeper, and I hope you can cover the rest. He says, when I get back... Then I'm going to pay even more. And he probably has to leave to pay for it all, right? I mean, that's probably where he's going. i got to work because this is what's going on. And yet, he does it. You know, Jesus spoke about this in the context, again, of loving our enemies. Consider this passage. It says, if anyone forces you to go one mile, why don't you go with them two? Give to those who ask, and don't turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You want to be good, be willing to pay the cost when you know what is needed, to answer it, to pay whatever it is, to to do what, what you see in front of you. But now, we've come to the fun moment. And the fun moment is seeing ourselves in this story. You ever do that with the story? You ever try to picture yourself with the main character? Uh, that's what I love about going to movies anyway, is I can relate to the, the, the characters and, and how it relates to my life. In fact, there's a movie that came out uh, that I could really relate to the main character. Uh, it came out this weekend. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. Thanks, guys. You're patient. Um, but, but what we want to figure out today is, uh, are we the priest, are we the Levite, or the Samaritan? 
Are we the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? In fact, why don't you think about it a little bit, and when you're ready, turn to someone next to you and just say one of the words. Are you ready? So, so um, when you're ready, turn to someone next to you and you say priest, Levite, or Samaritan. All right, go for it. Priest, Levite, Samaritan. Priest, Levite, Samaritan. Priest, Levite, Samaritan. Can I throw you a curve golf ball? You're none of them. You're none of them. I set you up to fail because we are actually the man who is beaten and left for dead. That's who we are. In fact, let me explain the context. Here's, here's the rest of Luke. It says on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. So he was trying to prove how Jesus was not a true teacher because he was the expert. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, he turns it back to him. You think you can outprove me? You, you tell me your smarts. What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said, he, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength, all your mind. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, you have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, and if you've read other portions of Scripture, can anyone love God with all their strength, heart, and mind, and their neighbor as themselves all the time? No. Jesus was setting this guy up to fail. And Jesus was hoping he'd get the point. And so he goes on because this, he knows the heart of this man. He said he wanted to justify himself. And in justifying himself, he said, well, who is my neighbor? Because I have done all of this. I have loved so good. And at the end of this story, the Jew would then look at the Samaritan and say, I would have never done that. And that was Jesus' point. That was the big gotcha. You haven't been as good as you thought you were. And God says to us today, you and I haven't been good. You know, the goodness we're considering is not what we always have been. In fact, we've had our stuff stolen. If, if we, through sinful desires, desire just the possessions of this world, God says those things can be stolen, those things can be broken, and those things, maybe not by robbers, will be stripped away because you can't take them with you. We've been beaten up because of sin. When we don't love others the way God commands and when they don't love us, there is hurt and there is pain. And sometimes it's harder than the blows that would be physical because we don't excel in this love all the time and neither do the people around us. And then on account of sin, we're left for half dead. But God says on account of sin, what you really are left for is hell and eternity because it's in your life. But there is one who's the true good Samaritan. And that's our Savior, Jesus. So you want a good Samaritan? It's not you and I. It's the author of goodness. It's the God who we've come to celebrate. Jesus who looks at us and looks at us beaten and left for dead. And he says, you know what? My heart goes out to you. And you know what? There is no mess in your life that I'm going to avoid. There's no situation so severe that I can't help. In fact, I want you to know every wound in your life, whether you've hurt someone or whether they've hurt you, God can heal. He is the almighty healer. He is the one who brings good out of bad. He is the one who brings forgiveness for every sin and release of guilt and shame for every sin. He is the almighty healer who can help, who's got the true balm. And Jesus, our God, was willing to pay the cost, even if it meant his life on the cross, so that we could have the help we needed. That's the goodness of God. You want goodness, you look to Jesus. He is the good Samaritan. But the great thing is, God says as we experience his goodness, the message of the cross that has healed us, and we are whole today because of Jesus, he says that the Holy Spirit then works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose. And so God says you have new desires. And if any of this goodness that we've been talking about makes sense to you, God says it's the Holy Spirit. And God can enable you to be a, a picture of that goodness. Maybe not every day, but on some days you can be good. And Jesus would tell us, as I have so loved you, so love one another. And, and that's why we want to pursue goodness, my friends. So let's end by talking a little bit more about how to be good and carry this on. You know, uh, one of the clever marketing tools there is is, uh, is from the orange juice commercial I saw. And the phrase that I, I picked up on, a, a good phrase, it's, it's uh, if you put good in, um, you will get good out. 
And, and that's true in health. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if you put good in, if you eat healthy, usually your body feels better. Usually you're, you're, you're better for the day, you have more energy. Put good in, your doctors will like it at those exams, and, and you get good out, right? Well, God says to us the same. In fact, I don't know if you picked up on that in our second lesson. Uh, up there it says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. The great thing is, my friends, when we pursue good, when we do the good we know to do, good happens. Good happens. It can happen in your relationships. For example, if you are continually loving, supporting, forgiving, encouraging, and kind, now, maybe not in a perfect way, but maybe in some way that will be reciprocated. Maybe not in every relationship, but maybe some people will see that and respond in kind to that goodness. If not with people, I know that's the case with God. When we pursue goodness, goodness can happen. We can see that following His ways are good. But perhaps the biggest time we have a return of good is not even in this life. You see, at Amazing Love, we're gathered to try to be as good as possible. Make no bones about it. I want to be the best version of myself as possible so that others would know the goodness of God. And I hope today you experience just a slice of that goodness through the words that are spoken, the music that is sung, through the people that you meet. Because He is that good. And what we're really gathering to do together is to have an eternal harvest is to see the good we've stored up there. Not even here, because we're not always going to see it. And I know of no more noble mission than this, than to do what Jesus said, which is to not store up treasures here on earth, but store up treasures in heaven where no robber can beat us down and steal away, where Jesus holds all our friends for an eternity. And how good would it be if we're in heaven and we saw someone who by the effort of amazing love got connected to the goodness of God? I'll give my life for that. And you're invited too. But in the meantime, we got to trust. In the meantime, we got to have faith that even when we don't see it, something's happening. Give you a final story. Never forget making the first garden I ever tried. I was so uh, impressed by this one uh, California flower called the golden poppy. Love it. It's blaze orange. Hunters, you probably love that too. I don't know. Um, but I love the golden poppy. And I remember having a whole seed packet full of golden poppies. And my dad gave me a corner of the backyard to make this. Garden. And so I, I probably, you know, a few five feet one way, two feet the other way. And, and I put in the hard work. I'm, I'm getting the grass out and I'm pulling all the weeds and it's sandy and it's, it's whatever. I'm doing rows and I'm, I'm watering it. And I put in the hard work to see my golden poppies come someday. Well, I wait and I wait and over time, something sprouts. I get kind of happy. It grows a little. I get a little more happy. But time passes, and I'm wondering, when are they ever going to bloom? What's going on here? Do you know I was growing weeds? Not one of the golden poppies ever sprouted. Not one. I never saw the orange. Just Florida weeds. I am not a good gardener. I love in God's economy, it's exactly the opposite. Do you know in Galatians chapter 6, we already read this, it said, a man will reap what he sows. I want you to tell you when you put in good at this place, you may not see it, maybe not till heaven, but when you see something that needs to be done and you do it for the glory of God, we will reap together, my friends, and we will rejoice together in the harvest at the end. That God has used us a bit of our goodness so they could see the true goodness. And so my question is as we leave, what is it that you know you need to do and should do it? Is it something with your family? Is it something in a relationship? Is it something that God clearly has called you to do and you've been making excuses why not to do it? God says, go ahead. Be good as I have been good. Do it to the glory of God. And as we end, let me pray for you. As we try to be good, we pray. Lord, thank you for being the good and doing the good I could not. Thank you for rescuing me in my desperate need and healing every wound. With the knowledge of your great love, let me live to thank you. Help me to see clearly the good I should do and then go after it. Help me to trust that as I sow by your strength, I will also reap through the goodness that people see in me. May they finally see the goodness of you. 
Amen. Please stand.